Most people don't know this, but we actually have an equation for the turning point of a quadratic function and the range. And I'm going to use those exact formulas to answer this question. Let's look at 7.1. The equation is saying, let's write down the coordinates of B and D. B and D are the x-intercepts of our function. We are given the function f of x being equals to x plus 4 multiplied by x minus 6. Obviously, if we solve for x here, we're going to get x is equals to minus 4 or x is equals to 6. It will be easy to see that between minus 4 and 6, the x coordinate of b is minus 4 and the y coordinate is 0 because it is the x intercept. And then this is the coordinates of b, the coordinates of d, we have 6 and 0. And just like that, we've answered 7.1. Let's look at 7.2. Calculate the coordinates of C. C is the turning point of f of x. We are given that f of x is equal to x plus 4 multiplied by x minus 6. Let's go ahead and multiply out. If we do that, we're going to get x squared minus 6x plus 4x minus 24. So we're going to have x squared minus 2x minus 24. If you want to find the x value of c, we say minus b divided by 2a. Where b is the coefficient of x, it happens to be minus 2 divided by 2a. a is the coefficient of x squared which is 1 so 2 divided by 2 that is 1 now we come to the y value of c this is what i was referring to we actually have a formula for that we can substitute back into our equation but we don't really have to do that uh, the formula it is c minus b squared divided by 4a so what is the value of c the constant that is minus 20 4. So we're going to have minus 24 minus b squared. Uh, b is minus 2. We square that and we divide by 4a. a is 1. So we're going to have minus 24 minus what is minus 2 squared. That is just 4. You divide that by 4, we just get uh, minus 1. So minus 24 minus 1, that is minus 25. So the coordinates of c we have 1 as the x value and minus 25 as the y value. Let's go ahead and do 7.3. 7.3, we're looking for the range of f. f is concave up. If f is concave up, then the range will be given by y is greater or equals to y at the turning point. But we know that y at the turning point is minus 25. So y is greater or equals to minus 25. Just like that, we've answered 7.3. 7.4. Uh, let's look at what the question is saying. Given that theta is equals to 14.04 and the tangent to f at t is perpendicular to ae, 7.4.1, Let's calculate the gradient of AE. If we're given the angle, then it will be very easy to compute. We know that tan of theta is equal to the gradient of that line. It happens to be AE in our case. So we're going to have tan of 14.04 being equal to the gradient of AE. If you put that in your calculator, you're going to get 1 divided by 4 being equal to the gradient of AE. Let's look at the equation that follows, 7.4.2. Let's calculate the coordinates of T. We are told that T lies on a tangent that is perpendicular to AE. So we can find the gradient at T with E. Uh, because if the tangent is perpendicular to AE, then the gradient of the tangent multiplied by the gradient of AE 
will give us minus 1. Uh, so the gradient of the tangent multiplied by AE, that is 1 divided by 4, is equals to minus 1. So the gradient of the tangent will be minus 1 divided by 1 divided by 4. If you solve that, you should get minus 4 as the gradient of our tangent. The tangent touches f of x at t. So we can derivate f of x and find f of prime x. And then that is how we're going to get to the x value of t. So if we do that, uh, f of x at this point, we know it is equals to x squared minus 2x minus 24. If we derivate this, we're going to get f prime of x being equals to 2x minus 2. And that's it. We know that the gradient at that point is minus 4. So we can say that 2x minus 2 is equals to minus 4. What are we trying to do here? We're trying to find the value of x for which the gradient is minus 4. And we know that the gradient is minus 4 at t. That's why we are doing this. So we're going to have 2x being equals to minus 2 plus 2. That will be minus 2. So x is equals to minus 1. Now we can substitute this value into f of x. So f of minus 1 will be equals to minus 1 squared minus 2 multiplied by minus 1 minus 24. This will be 1 plus 2 minus 24. So we have minus 21. The coordinates of t, the x value is minus 1. And the y value is minus 21. The last equation, 7.5. A straight line G parallel to AE cuts F at K and R. Calculate the X coordinate of R. Right, so what we are going to do here, we're going to find uh, the equation of G. We are going to find G of X. And then after finding G of X, we can equate g of x and f of x. And then we're going to find the x coordinates of which they touch, which happens to be k and r. So our first step, let's find the equation of g of x. So we're given the gradient of g of x. So to say, it is said to be parallel to ae. The gradient of ae is 1 divided by 4. So the gradient of g of x should be 1 divided by Four. Now we just need to find C, but we're given K, a coordinate on G. So C should be quite easy to find. If we substitute K, we're going to get minus 9 being equals to 1 divided by 4 multiplied by minus 3 plus C. So minus 9 plus 1 divided by 4 multiplied by 3 is equals to c so c is equals to minus 33 divided by 4 so g of x is equals to 1 divided by 4x minus 33 divided by 4 we need to equate this to f of x we're going to be able to find the two x values for which f of x and g of x touches that is how we're going to get the x coordinate of r so let's go ahead and say that g of x is equals to f of x. So g of x is a half x minus 33 divided by 4. And then f of x, on the other hand, we have x squared minus 2x minus 24. So if we rearrange this, we're going to get x squared minus 2x minus 1 divided by 4x and then minus 24 plus 33 divided by 4 being equals to 0. It will be wise for us to multiply out by 4 because we have 1 divided by 4 and 33 divided by 4. If we multiply it by 4, everything sits down. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to have 4x squared minus 8x minus x. And then 24 multiplied by 4, so that is 24, 48, 96 plus 33 being equals to 0. So if we solve that, we're going to get 4x squared 
minus 9x minus 63 being equals to 0. So now it is just a matter of factorizing. Uh, you can use the quadratic formula because of this coefficient of 4. It becomes really hard to factorize using your mind without the aid of a calculator. So if we factorize anyway, we shall get 4x minus 21 multiplied by x plus 3 being equals to 0. So x is equals to 21 divided by 4 or x is equals to minus 3. We know that x is equals to minus 3 is the x value of k. That just tells us that x is equals to 21 divided by 4 is the x value of r.